Vega Frontier's first gaming benchmarks are out, and it's not looking good. So what's up with this? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that if you like the video, make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you can get notified when there's a new video out. Okay, so Vega. We have our first fully fledged Vega Frontier Edition review by PC Per, which I'll have that article linked in the description if you want to see the full benchmarks and breakdown. Either way, when it comes to gaming, it's not very good. I'll start out by saying Vega royally beats the Titan XP in most professional tasks, which is something to be commended, but this is gamer meld, and I know most of you are more concerned about its gaming. For those who don't know, it it really did pretty horribly, like really bad. We're talking it got beat by not only the 1080 Ti in most of the benchmarks, but also the 1080, and even lost and tied the 1070 in some. To say people are disappointed would be a pretty huge understatement. Well, are they right to be? No in absolutely. Let me explain. I see many people arguing that Vega Frontier isn't made for gaming. It's a professional card, and you're right. Kind of. It's really confusing, because during the PC World interview and discussion, the AMD rep is comparing the card to the Titan XP, and essentially saying to get to Vega's performance, you'd have to get the $2,000 Quadra P5000, which is about true, considering Vega's gaming performance is just a little bit better. But then he references to professionals buying a workstation with a low-end professional card just to replace it with a faster consumer GPU. So at least to me, it would seem AMD's intentions are to essentially make a hybrid similar to the Titan XP, but with pro-optimized drivers. Now they did reiterate one thing to say it isn't a gaming GPU, but I think the biggest thing they said was that their consumer class drivers are a work in progress. That just sounds to me like they should have worked more on the drivers. For professional lows, this is nice. Really, I would almost defend this card. I'm just somewhat annoyed that they keep trying to reference to optimization and the card not being for gaming. Yet, Raja said the card would come with RX drivers. See, both RX Vega and the Frontier Edition are, at least from what I've seen, supposed to have the same 32-bit, 13.1 teraflops of compute. So with the same software, there shouldn't be a massive difference. I personally think they're using this as an excuse for having poorly optimized RX drivers, and that's why they haven't released RX Vega yet. And hey, that's not necessarily a horrible thing, that just means that it can definitely do much better at gaming. But in the same reply during the AMA, he also stated that the Frontier Edition card could run smooth 4K gaming, which is the same goal of RX Vega, and I'm sorry, this isn't what people think of when they think smooth gaming. And for him to say that, and then have people say stuff like, oh, well, it's not meant for gaming. Well, why say that? Now, he did state optimization, but it sounded more like he meant there's added computes and all that good stuff that the consumer card doesn't have, hence the price difference, and why he wasn't suggesting you buy that card just for gaming, because the RX Vega will be much cheaper and should perform at least a little bit better with something like higher clocks and things like that. And pretending that this card isn't at all made for both professional applications and gaming sounds to me like a cop-out that I think will do nothing but get people's hopes up again, only to crush them. Now with that said, if it's simply that their drivers aren't ready, which I think has a big part to do with it, then we probably can expect much better performance in the future. But saying it's because of the card, when it should have the same capability spec-wise, at least from what we've heard, is the RX Vega just doesn't seem right. And while it's true RX Vega will be better, I highly doubt we would see a 50% boost in performance or more with just slightly higher clocks, but hey, I guess I shouldn't be too upset. I honestly still put it where I've always put it. I see RX Vega being slightly better than the 1080, but not at the 1080 Ti level. So in conclusion, Vega Frontier really isn't a bad card, but it's just really confusing. Vega isn't a Quadra competitor. They're 32 compute, which is what shows the potential for gaming performance, by the way, is far less than, say, the 1080 Ti, well, except for the P6000. See, and that one actually performs better in gaming. But see, Vega Frontier is supposed to have the same 13.1 teraflops as the RX Vega, at least from what we've heard, and since it has the same drivers, how much of a difference can it really be? Unless they just don't have the most optimized drivers yet, to which, of course, it's not the card that's performing bad, but the RX drivers. So while that does it for the news, let me know what you think. Am I kind of being harsh? You know that I'm going to praise AMD when I get the chance, but I'm also going to say when I think that they aren't making the right moves. But how do you feel about the Frontier Edition's performance? Do you think they should have waited and had better drivers before release, or is that really all it can do? Let me know in the comments below. 
That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.